So the plan, it doesn't. Yeah, so we think that the proposal she has for the flats, it will not have adequate prevention of noise transference between the different rooms and the different dwellings. Um, I think that it's going to increase the footfall to and from the property, so that's just not just visitors, but also potential deliveries from online purchases. This is Raymond's part, so Raymond could be able to explain that if you want, Chris. Do you want to, do you want to, do you want to briefly go over? Yeah, basically looked out at the layout, and if you look at the flats four and eight, the two, as I mentioned earlier, two sides of the internal walls are the walls of the shaft, the uh, left shaft. So you can see the left shaft there when it says lounge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that means the flat above it has the same thing. I mean, that is the uh, the area where people are going to be using as their you know rest but area. With due respect, sir, that's of no interest to you. It's no interest to me, but it's uh, I mean, surely the, I'm pointing this out to the council well, as part yeah, of an yes. amenity of the people. Yes, but as I found out to my cost, there are two types. There is building control, and yeah. this is dealt with under building control. And then there's planning application, which is, uh, you know, what what we're about. Certainly, by all means, point out to uh, Callum Sayers that, in your view, this yeah. contravenes uh, building control regulation so and so. And I'm sure that he will have a look at that. Okay. That is massive. This is what she proposed to do. So she's, this whole thing here is going to be extension to make us this is massive. Take the floor. So that's the back. She's going to, there's a garage used to be here. She's going to knock it down and build this bit here. Yeah. And she's going to bring out the back here. And she's going to extend it this, the back here towards the side as well. So it's going to over, you know, tower over our house and block all the light. And these are obscured windows. But these windows, are, I don't think they'll be obscured and be overlooking the house. But they already have windows there anyway. There are already windows there, there are already windows there. Yeah. But, did, did the but they have included uh, two new windows here, isn't it? I want to these two mm. are included. The wall are already there. They are just increasing that little part. But these two windows will be added to it. Will be, will if look they're the obscure, part. then... I think you'll find that there are bathroom windows, so, yeah, so there isn't the, much. Yeah, you pro we'll probably. Um, I, I, well, Divyesh, do you have any lessons to share from your own experiences of sleeping uh, in the I have to say that uh, we, we didn't. Uh, we, we, we didn't uh, aggressively pursue uh, our application. Uh, uh, when we first put it in, uh, a number of objections were raised, particularly with regard to the, um, uh, the nature and the site of how it might look. Eventually, we, we, we stopped only because of practical considerations with regard to underground parking. So, unfortunately, no. So, so they insisted on underground parking? Or you were no, that was an option that we were thinking about in order to try and make sure that the, the, we, we don't lose sight of the, uh, the, the character of the house. Yeah. So she's going to knock out this garage here, extend it two stories up here, and that's one side. And then the other side, she's going to. Oh, well, she's going to basically. You can't see it here, so, but she's going to extend this bit here all the way down to the back, so it's going to be taller than our house here. But I think the third story already exists. All she's doing is extending, extending it to the back. Right to the back. Yeah. yeah. Right to the back of the and the, the thing that you can't tell from these these pictures, John, is that that building is already not in keeping with the rest of the street. Excuse me. <clears throat> it's one of only two very old buildings. It, well, I say very old, but yeah, 1904. When I was built. Yours was built 1904. Mm -hmm. So it's not dissimilar to our house. In terms, no, it, <laughs> no, in terms of the, the third story and, yeah. the, and the chimneys, etc. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, my, when I originally wrote my letter, I was going to say it was the biggest property in the street, and then I remembered that yours is probably the biggest <laughs> in the street. You know, I'm not sure of exact details, but um, our, our, our um, uh, uh, planning application was rejected. We'd also looked to extend it across, like, uh, uh, this particular one. Which was the street. But ours was actually facing the street. Yeah. Whereas I think this is going to pack. Yeah. Yes. Which might be allowed. Yes. May I ask, by the way, is yeah. the um, is the planning um, order out? Is there a number for it yet, or is it? Yes. 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 So when does your um, consultation period end? September the tenth. So in the coming week. Really? So right. Then you've got a busy weekend ahead of you, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you're all going to write a letter, and you're all going to try and upload it, and you make sure. And if you copy your three ward councillors on, John Hinckley, Jean Langerman, and Susan Ball, it's easier, by the way, if you use our non-harrow.gov addresses, which I've given you there, virgin.net. Why? Because you're going to go onto it and look at it, and I don't often look at my business email over the weekend, but I do look on this. Thank you. So we're all going to write individually and yes. submit yes. our things on the portal. Uh, but do you think there's also value in writing a joint letter with everyone? I think it is. Mm. I think. Because when the case officer comes to decide it, if he sees that there's one letter with 40 signatures, you know, that's one thing. But if he sees that there are 40 letters and, you know, the one with all, he sees that there is serious opposition. Mm. And I would also let the lady, the developer, know that there are 40 residents who are dead against it. Um, and you can then, um, when it comes to the planning process, you can insist that it's not dealt with by committee but heard in the actual planning committee, i.e. you talk about it, and you can all come along en masse and, you know, you can make your points again. Mm -hmm. So it is possible to get this particular thing heard in the, uh, heard in open committee. Because we've done that once or twice before. Who is the case officer? No, there's another name on the... Beverly Kutra is the head of planning, is the deputy head of planning. Um, Callum Sayers. Oh, Callum, yeah. He's all right. He's a New Zealander, so he doesn't go on Australia, so he, he does things. I dealt with him, yes. <laughs> I dealt with him. He's, he's a nice guy, actually. Well, no, he, he acts, you know, he, because some of them are... Uh, he's, he's reasonable. Yes. I've dealt with him. Yes, it's Callum Sayers. Yes. Is, is, it, is he somebody worth approaching? Definitely. Absolutely yes. definitely. <laughs> approaching by letter, phone? Email. email. Do it by email. Send an email. <laughs> and copy in Beverly Future and copy in your local councillors. Yes. He does have a direct number and you can talk to him on the phone yes. because I've spoken to him before. Okay, well then, then, yes. then you have the advantage. So email and copy everybody in. Write to your MP, Nick Hurd. Does he exist? Oh, yeah. uh, yes, he does exist. <laughs> I've never seen him around. He's never done. Well, that's because you don't respond to my invitation to come to a, a, a fundraising lunch. And there you can ask a question. Next one, uh, I think it's the 22nd of October. Fellini's. So you also you already submitted a previous planning permission to convert the nursing home to 12 flats, but that was turned down, and now she's going for nine. Right. So when was that done? Uh, I don't have knowledge, you know. In the mid middle of December it, it last year. It, it, on the, uh, on the, on the uh, website, it says in, informal or something. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a formal application like this one. I'm not sure how to it. it, it there's some terminology. Uh, a trial run for discussion yeah. from which this then uh, evolved. Yeah. yeah. A nine flat had turned down before oh, she submitted for nine flats. They, she applied for 12, oh. but they'll turn down the nine you flat. Know, she withdrew the previous one, or it was turned down? Uh, I'd have to ask Lorna, do you know? No. 
I, I don't think it went as far as the right. formal application. On, on, the, on the website where it lists applications, yeah. uh, it lists, I, I, I don't think the word informal is there, but that's the implication. Right, because that means you saved yourself 100 quid. You know, if you withdraw it before it's chucked out, yeah. then you don't have to pay another 100 pound or whatever it is to reapply. So she's got good advice from somebody on the planning document. What date was the notice actually put up? Because in our case, um, our notice was dated the 15th of July, which gave us 21 days from then, but they took about five days to put the notice up. And the notice on the uh, lamp post was uh, five days later, so that gave us an extra five days. Is that the same in your case? What's the date on your... Uh, Notice on your uh, 20th of August is the date on the notice. But 20th of August is the date on the letter, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's no, the date so on the notice. The date, so, what's the date on the uh, letter? No, what's the date on the lamppost? I don't know. No, no lamppost. Well, there is one on the lamppost. There, there is a notice be, on the lamppost. There must be a notice on the lamppost. Yeah. And that has a date on it? Yes. So. But I don't know what and that if that date is after the 10th of August, then that's the date that... Uh, You've got 30 days from there. 21. 21 days yes, from there. Yes. It's not 10. No. So, which is important because, you know, each day will um, give you more time to marshal your efforts. Um, so who's going to do the pro forma letter? Christopher's. Um, well, Christopher will, I'll be involved, and Lorna's has done a lot of work, so probably right. the three of us, and then Raymond's had an input as well. And so there's a draft of it. Okay. Have but you had any input from Anne Swinson? Uh, about ten days ago. Right. Uh, she's back on Tuesday. Uh, right. I said I'd speak so to her. So, when you've got your draft letter, I should run it by um, Anne Swinson um, and see what she says, because she might well wish to enhance some... But just a quick question for Jonathan. Yes. Um, so, we're all going to write individually and yes. submit yes. our things on the portal. Uh, but do you think there's also value in writing a joint letter with everyone? I think it is. Mm. I think. Because when the case officer comes to decide it, if he sees that there's one letter with 40 signatures, you know, that's one thing. But if he sees that there are 40 letters and, you know, the one with all, he sees that there is serious opposition. Mm. And I would also let the lady, the developer, know that there are 40 residents who are dead against it. Um, and you can then, um, when it comes to the planning process, you can insist that it's not dealt with by committee but heard in the actual planning committee, i.e. you talk about it, and you can all come along en masse and, you know, you can make your points again. So it is possible to get this particular thing heard in the, uh, heard in open committee. Thank you.